We watched World Class Championship Wrestling Season 1, Episode 53. So the deal is, this show aired on December 27th, 1982. The footage was shot on Christmas. This is the first part of the Christmas Day show, or part of the first part of the Christmas Day show from two days earlier. Oh. So, uh, yeah, th this is Wrestling Star Wars. How they got away with using that name, I have no idea, but that's what the show was called. And continue to. Yeah, for years, yes. At, at, at Reunion Arena in Dallas, big big arena, big show. And uh, we got the first couple of matches here and the uh, other matches, including the, the one everyone remembers the show for, we will review next week. Wasn't uh, Reagan calling his uh, space defense program Star Wars? Probably, so but... I think you could probably get away so. with that. Well, way, there's, there's a referencing... A, a, Difference between a uh, political or military operation and using that name to market your show and then sell tickets. No, I'm saying, but you could market it and saying you are referencing Reagan's Star Wars and not Lucas' Star Wars. I suppose you could try that. Yeah. Uh, mm. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I do not recommend doing this in 2023. If, no, makes a, if, uh, if, if, uh, if the U.S. Army does Operation Avengers, don't call your wrestling show Avengers Wrestling. Marvel will obliterate you. So we have two matches on the show. The world-class six-man champions will be crowned. And then there'll be a $10,000 pull match battle royal where the final three competitors will fight for ten grand. So the match for the vacant, I think inaugural actually, six-man champions, uh, it's booked as the fabulous Freebirds versus Mike Sharp and Ben Sharp and Tom Steele. And so, of course, we start with a promo from the Von Erichs. And Bill Mercer says we're going to hear from, I think it was Kevin and David. And they will certainly be in this trios championship match. Except, and I am not making this up, they just have too many championships. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> too, too bad. You think Roman Reigns is on a reign of terror here, man? <laughs> Your so dad has given you too many belts. Yeah. So David thinks the Freebirds are the better team tonight, but he wants the Von Erichs to be next in line. Carrie is wrestling for the world title in the show, so they cannot be in the tournament. They cannot be in this match. They'll get their shot. And with you people backing us, I believe we can beat any six-man team in the country. And then Kevin speaks. Kevin, I'm not sure anyone ever smartened Kevin up to this day. <laughs> I haven't seen the Freebirds much, but they're good buddies with David. There must be good wrestlers, but us being brothers, nobody can beat us. And then Bill Mercer is sure the Von Erichs will be right in the thick of it. So I was a little worried that we were going to get nothing but promos and interviews for this entire hour. Thank God we got a match. And maybe the best match that we've seen in the three weeks of World Class here to start. 100%. Can I say that you reading that promo was 1,000 more charismatic than these uh, two goofs? I think uh, it's important yeah. you do that, actually. Yeah, because... Yeah. Like, it's funny. The, 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 the show was like 45 minutes long, and if they talk in a normal speed, it could easily be 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because the story always was, if you could combine Kevin's intensity with Carrie's look and athleticism and supposedly David's promo ability, you'd have like the best wrestler in the world. But man, we have not seen it from David on the show yet. He did a better one in the ring shortly here, actually. But he's <laughs> cut a couple of promos backstage that were just nothing. And uh, uh, Bill Mercer, is that the... That's the play-by-play -play uh, guy. Yeah, that guy can be best described as uh, Abe Lincoln without his hat. Sure. That guy had uh, the beard with gray in the middle and the mustache, and that guy looked classic, classic Abraham Lincoln. So they're about to begin this trios... trios I call them trios matches now, so I think it's a much better name. Uh, Michael Hayes takes the mic, wishes everyone a Merry Christmas, but announces that Buddy Roberts... Is snowed in in Denver, Colorado. Mm. Cannot make it here to Dallas, Texas. So, snowed in. Mm -hmm. that's, sure. that's the story. Well, let's, let's go somewhere, Greg. So, uh, it's a free words. Come on. I mean, it, it could go somewhere, and he was also doing that. Although, I, th I mean, I think they were more booze than drugs. It was I also so. It was also world class, <laughs> so there's plenty of room for both. But anyway, uh, they were very proud, these free birds were. To be the American contingent in this match, which is funny because Buddy Roberts is Canadian, but <laughs> no, nobody knew that. <laughs> Semantics. Yeah. So now it's two against three, but we have never backed down from a fight in our life. At this point, David Von Erich hits the ring. 
And this is where he's, he's a much better in-ring promo than backstage. If one of his brothers was snowed out and couldn't get to the building, he knows that Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy would be there to back him up. Therefore, Hayes and Gordy, I give you my body for this match, baby. What? What we said. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Freebirds are announced as the Toast of the Coast here in Texas, which I had never heard them call that before. I guess the Gulf Coast could well, be. Uh, Texas on the Gulf, yeah. Yeah, I guess that applies. Uh, Mike Sharp, as you may have guessed, is in fact Iron Mike Sharp. Uh, this loudest, is before, loudest can be always and forever. This is before his arm was broken. No brace on it. But otherwise, it's Iron Mike goddamn Sharp. You know what? This guy is way bigger than you realize, or was way bigger than you realize, because he was mostly in WWF in the late 80s, the absolute land of the Giants, with yep. Andre and Bundy and Gang and Bam Bam and who in the hell knows else who else. With Kamala was there. But he's in here. I think he may have been bigger than Gordy. Yep. And Gordy was a big man. So you mentioned Bill Mercer. I'm sure he's a nice guy. He gets worse every single week. He called the first half of this match calling Mike Sharp Tom Steele. I assure you he is not Tom Steele. They have nothing in common at all whatsoever. And uh, towards the end there, he's talking about the Steels and the Sharps like there were four of them. And he kind of went back and forth on uh, Mike Sharp and Tom Steele. He had no idea what was going on. Terry Gordy was awesome. Plainly the best guy in this match. He was 21 years old at this point. Jeez. And an eight-year pro. That's a little hinky, but it worked for him at the time. In the short term, anyway. So, doing this match, a pile driver is called an atomic drop. Uh, we talked about Gordy. Iron Mike Sharp, you know. Ben Sharp and Tom Steele were totally fine veteran dream and wrestlers who knew what the hell they were doing, how to do a trios match. David was okay. Crowd totally loved him. Michael Hayes was kind of sucky, but he was so wacky. He reminded me of the big inflatable things that come uh, up when they're uh, when Bailey used to come to the ring. Oh, yeah. sure. That the guy was just flapping man. around everywhere. Yes. Just every single move was just flapping and moving. Like That guy was burning calories just walking. Yeah. And then Craig mentioned uh, Iron Mike Sharp as being the loudest guy in the ring. Like the crowd is screaming for the Von Erics, and they're screaming for everything else. And on top of all that, at a different frequency, you can still hear Mike Sharp screaming, <laughs> ah, ah, "Settle down, settle down, settle down!" And he does this amazing thing when he works that he puts every single part of his body yes. into every single thing he does. He walks like. Um, Vince McMahon when he tore his quad, okay. he, he does that thundering rrr, 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 walk, and then when he does a um, a punch, he swings his arm around in such a fashion and times his not even one stomp. He stomps both feet at the exact same time, and his entire body moves every single time he moves. I cannot stop watching this guy. Mike Sharp was so great, I loved it. He was awesome. Yes. And uh, Ben Sharp and Tom Steele were both totally quality. So so the baby faces run wild forever. Forever. This thing went, I think, 18 minutes was all said and done. And the first nine minutes was just free birds and Von Eric whipping ass. And they finally cut off Michael Hayes. And it's chin locks and bear hugs and sleep, sleep holds. And uh, that may sound terrible. I assure you it was not. There was a chin lock here. Ben Sharp put Michael Hayes in a chin lock. And it looked, if you came up behind an angry chimpanzee and wrapped your arm around his chin and tried to hold him down, it would look something like this. Michael Hayes was fighting to get out of this chin lock. And Ben Sharp was fighting to hold him down. And then Iron Mike tags back in, gets a very, very long, very sexually suggestive bear hug. And, uh... <laughs> Bronco Lubitsch is useless. The baby faces are coming in without tags. He's just standing there. There's a point where David comes without a tag to like break up a hold. And he starts throwing punches. And he looks at Bronco like, get me the fuck out of the ring. It's amazing that there was no uh, control uh, near the end of this match because there's two referees in there. I did not. Was he there the entire time? Uh, that was my question, too, because about halfway through, I noticed that there's two refs in that ring. 
both of them useless. Yes. The one guy that was counting the pins, uh, like referees nowadays, they go almost down, all the way down all fours and almost on their mm-hmm. bellies, and they're slapping well, the mat hard. Yeah. Yeah. This guy, yes. he went down on one knee yeah. and would slap it um, as soft as you could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're calling out referees these days dropping down all fours? No, that's every referee ever in history of wrestling, <laughs> yes. except Bronco Lubitsch. This guy, yeah. Yeah. But for some reason, there was two referees in there. Well, I think the the idea Cause is six men to to help maintain control, but he wasn't doing anything. Eventually, <laughs> clearly, Gordy gets a hot tag, and then uh, David tags in right away. And uh, there's all six guys in the ring fighting, and both referees are standing in the corner, minding their own business, mm-hmm. just sitting there watching the action unfold. And somewhere in here, David pins Mike Sharp with a jumping knee. Yeah, and Dallas explodes. They were so happy to see David Von Erich come to his friend, the Freebirds, his friends, the Freebirds rescue, win the inaugural six man tag team championships here. And uh, I don't know, this would be everyone's cup of tea. If you're used to seeing trios matches with like the Bucks or the Lucha Bros <laughs> or the Usos, even or the New Day, there was a lot, there would be a lot more action in a match like that than there was here. But I really, really enjoyed this. They got 18 minutes. It was a well-deserved 18 minutes. It wasn't like it dragged or went too long. They had a, a, a very simple story to tell, but they told it. And then when it was time, when it was the right time, they just finished. And uh, and that was that. Two things. Uh, it was weird for me because everything I had read about World Class is the Freebirds and the Von Erics were bitter, bitter rivals. Not doing the math that the stake took place before the turn. So me seeing the Freebirds as baby faces was weird because I had never seen it. Number two, Michael P.S. Hayes is a fountain of charisma. My goodness. He was he had the charisma of the whole entire arena mm-hmm. when he was in there. Gyrating, and- hips thrusting. Oh, yeah. Clapping every, just every time everybody. they cut to the audience. The girls are screaming for for Michael. Yeah. Every time. Well, his pelvis was thrusting. Oh, yes. yes. His pelvis was thrusting. His his sweater that he had on, or I'm sorry, his hairy chest. Um, yeah, girls used to be into that. <laughs> Weird. Things change. <laughs> now, the post-match was fascinating, considering we all know where this ends within the end, by the end of the next show. So the Freebirds win, and Michael and Terry jump into each other's arms. And they're hugging, and they're jumping up and down. And the other corner across the ring, David Von Erich, who won the match for them, Mm -hmm. has been left out in the cold. And he kind of looks over at them and gives them a shrug, like, what's up? And Hayes makes eye contact, and he charges, and he gives his buddy David a hug. But they made it very clear there that uh, David is the third wheel in this little relationship. And then we go outside for a promo (laughs) where David immediately says, these six-man championship teams belong with a set of brothers. If it's not going to be me and Carrie and Kevin, it should be the Freebirds and their brother, Buddy Roberts. And so I am relinquishing my share of the championships. And uh, Gordy doesn't care. He just cuts his normal promo. Michael Hayes was very disappointed. He didn't believe David did this. He, uh, You could tell he was a little betrayed, a little hurt. And uh, it meant a lot to him when his friend, David Von Erich, decided he did not want to be a championship with, champion with him anymore. And Hayes did not get to talk, which blew, blew me away at first, because it's Michael Hayes. We've seen a lot of terrible, terrible, terrible promos in this company. I would give him this man a microphone every time he was in the ring. But it makes sense, because you don't want to spill the beans. There's more to come. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a... Commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers. 
at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.